do? I've had, Alex, since you and I did the last show together, when I was on with you last, I've had multiple law enforcement and military contacts absolutely tell me that they're noticing foreign observers assigned to the Sheriff's Department, the Highway Patrol, State Patrol, whatever you call it. But one of the guys said, Steve, he said, look, I'm XSF, Special Forces. And he said, I know a hitter when I see one. He said, I was one. And I said, well, and I'm just making this name up. His name is not Mike. I said, well, Mike, then you know what he's there for. And here's what this man, who's a former Special Forces, a major law enforcement and a hero to the law enforcement community, said, he said, I know he's here to take out us after we've been ordered to do the unconstitutional and the immoral. And he said, me and my men are not going to do it. So, Alex, what I'm saying to you is this. The pre-positioning of foreign observer slash assassins has already been integrated into many, not all, but many of the law enforcement agencies across the United States. That is, you and I have spoken about Marcus Wolf. We have spoken about Evgeny Primakov. We have spoken about the Department of Homeland Security hiring them. And these are standard communist operating procedures. And now we've got Obama going to address all of the kids on the 8th of October, the same kids that are going to be held captive, and their parents will be held captive if their kids are at school. I, and I, I would it, imagine he's going to comfort them during the flu. This is going to be the whole kickoff. He's not saying that. In fact, I'm glad you brought that up. I want to do that now. Van Jones, who works for the White House, he's a czar uh, over communications and community organizing, the tens of billions they're handing out to these groups, uh, we're getting videos, reports, local news, them in the red and black uniforms, knocking on doors, threatening people, on video, beating people up at town halls, biting fingers off, Associated Press. I mean, folks, you cannot make this up. We have Al Gore on, on audio saying, don't, you know, report on your parents. They're liars about global warming. You know best. Uh, we've got Obama to address the students, asking for their help in his agenda. I mean, it, folks, you cannot... Again, I can't believe this is happening in America. I mean, even though I knew it was coming, it's now here. It's kind of like the bully says he's meeting you after school. The school day's over. You walk out. There he is. He weighs 50 pounds more than you, and you, the fight's on. I mean, the bully is now about to punch us in the nose. His arm is moving, and and then the media matter says I'm a criminal, and none of this exists. Here is Van Jones, the community organizing uh, bully, uh, saying on syndicated radio what's happening. Here it is. Uh, one of the things that has happened, I think, too often to progressives is that uh, we don't understand the relationship between minimum goals and maximum goals. Uh, you know, right after Rosa Parks uh, refused to give up her seat, if the civil rights leaders had jumped out and said, okay, now we want uh, reparations for slavery, we want uh, redis redistribution of all wealth, and we want to legalize mixed marriages. If that had been there, they had come out with a maximum program the very next day, uh, they'd have been laughed at. Um, instead, they came out with a very minimum program. Uh, you know, we just want to integrate these buses. Uh, the students a few years later came out with a very minimum program. We just want to sit at the lunch counter. But inside that minimum demand was a very radical kernel that eventually meant that from 1954 to 1968, you know, complete revolution was on the table uh, for this country. And I think that this green movement has to pursue those same steps and stages. Right now we're saying we want uh, to move from suicidal gray capitalism to some kind of uh, eco-capitalism where, uh, you know, at least we're not, you know, fast-tracking the destruction of the whole planet. Um, will that be enough? No, it won't be enough. Uh, we want to go beyond ex systems of exploitation and oppression altogether. But that's a process. And I think what's great about uh, the movement that's beginning to emerge is that the crisis is so severe in terms of joblessness, violence, and now ecological threats that people are willing to be both very pragmatic and very visionary. And uh, so the green economy will start off as a small subset, and uh, we will, we're going to push it and push it and push it um, until it becomes the engine for transforming the whole society. My guest has been Van Jones, founder and president of Green for All. I don't All. know if you guys know Van Jones. Van Jones is... Ooh. This is his house, apparently. Van Jones, all right. So, Van Jones, we were so delighted to be able to recruit him into the White House. We've been watching him, uh, really, for, he's not that old, but for as long as he's been active out in Oakland and all of the ways that he has, the 
creative ideas that he has. And so oh, yeah, now that's we've enough. captured that. That's the White House and him in the White House and, and them thanking him. The issue here is this is not communism or for the people, even if you believe in that. This is big banks openly say they're going to take over the whole economy, and then those parasites you see are going to move into the middle class, your houses, your land, your daughters are theirs, your kids are theirs. And coming up, we finish up with flu, I'm going to play Al Gore, I'm going to play Obama, I'm going to play them all saying, and Rahm Emanuel, kids report on your parents. Kids, don't do what your parents say. This is the most savage assault and now on giant telescreens, the president's going to start addressing your kids and telling them to literally come after you. Ladies and gentlemen, they've already got their goons beating people up everywhere. Our guest is Steve Quayle, stevequayle.com. I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars.com.